what's up guys and welcome back to another video so this is going to be one of the first installments really to my videos for hollow realization and um, it's going to be the level one challenge now um, this is inspired by one other youtuber who did this before I believe I don't know how to pronounce his name correctly but it was like it was called like Kyuiko or something like that and he originally did this he had his little series on it and he named it the eternal rookie well sadly I don't know what happened to his channel anymore because after he finished the eternal rookie he did make some fatal bullet videos of him playing through the story whenever that game came out and he didn't even finish it um, I, I don't know what happened to the person don't know if they just decided to quit YouTube don't know if they you know something happened to them in real life but um, recently as well you know I would go back and watch their eternal rookie because I really liked it and recently I don't know how recently it was but um, a friend showed me that their YouTube channel is gone now so I, I don't know what happened but it's a shame because the person was really good um, I like their style of the video for the eternal rookie and everything so this is kind of to pay tribute to it and also to just challenge myself with it this challenge is not hard at all really it's mainly well base game wise it's not hard I haven't gotten to DLC at all yet but base game wise um, it's easy the hardest part is mainly just trying to stay level one because you're constantly gonna have to look at your buff and then if your character ends up going down you lose all your buffs so if you end up getting up and you can't cast your buff again and your AIs or NPCs out on the field if they kill a mob you get the XP as well because I've failed this challenge three times so far and each time it has been because of an AI like I said I've had it where I'm just walking out in the field you know me and my AIs are not doing anything and the NPCs if you're near them whenever they end up killing an enemy you get the XP so it, it sucks so that's mainly the most challenging part of this challenge right now and also the fact that uh, your stats are so low in the beginning so I'm typically always gonna be one shot but these are my stats right now my play time most of it has been like AFK but 12 hours in and I did end up beating the first area with the Cobalt Lord um, I killed him like two more times in multiplayer um, skill tree wise this is how we're looking for now um, I need to focus on getting some of the other ones I did use katana for a little bit just to get some extra little skill points for one hand but yeah I believe I'm gonna have to keep buffer on though because for skill trees like for example this skill is what I need to use to stay level one because any XP I get it gives it to my partner and it's only in the buffer tree so if I change my skill tree I cannot use that buff anymore so I'm gonna have to either stay as this skill tree or I'm gonna have to buff and swap skill trees and come back to it but I'll probably just stay in this skill tree honestly I don't really feel like doing the buff swaps in this game I really don't feel like it so I'm most likely gonna just stay as this I'll probably still level the other ones though just to get um, some stuff up in them but that's that's mainly it so that's our status for now friend list um, I'm waiting so I can get um, Kismel and Premiere because when I get Kismel and Premiere I'm going to keep them on my team forever so they can help me in the 1000 floors yes I will be attempting that which will be a pain but um, I want to keep them because they can heal me up in the 1000 floors and then once I can get like Tia I'll put her on there as well or I'll just use one of the NPCs from the game itself um, I'm not sure but this is how we're looking I've mainly been using Silica uh, Sinon and Straya. they these have been mainly my, mainly my party members for now so and you can already see they're already level like what 45 being the highest which is kind of crazy because I think when the game first came out like the level cap was 50 60 or 70 somewhere around there and keep in mind I'm still in the first area so that's pretty crazy but yeah with all that talking um, out the way 
I don't know how I'm gonna structure these videos. I don't know if I'm gonna do them like I did my sacred art where I'm just gonna cut a bunch of stuff out and just only list some important stuff that I did or whatever. I don't know how I'm gonna structure them. So whatever you see is whatever you see. So with that all being said, now I'll just roll whatever clips I have from um, what I had recorded and then what I had all the way up to like the first boss. Uh, keep in mind some stuff I got lost in recording because I just simply had to close the game so I could uh, reset my level. And then uh, sometimes I just didn't I just didn't clip anything. But there's really nothing messing out. There's nothing to get in the beginning besides just me unlocking a skill. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and roll the clip. So main thing is this fight right here. This fight was honestly the hardest one in the beginning for me because this plant just keeps spawning mobs. Uh, can basically even hit when I'm behind him. And also the poison. So I had to make sure that uh, whenever I ended up dying, get up really quick and try to hopefully get my, uh, my buff off. But I did this one mainly so I can get the scimitar from this chest just so I wouldn't have to buy one or anything. So I can just have one to get skill points. Oh my god, my luck, a five-star scimitar. <clears throat> and then here, this is where we finally do our first area boss, which is the Kobo Lord. This fight was um, not hard, uh, mainly because you got the other AIs running around. You know, they can do at least a little bit more damage than me, uh, plus my AIs who do a lot more damage than me. Um... Mainly, uh, it was just trying to, you know, knock him down, you know, take out the legs, uh, so I can do, you know, a lot more damage while he's in his down phase. And other than that, I don't think I, there was really any problems. Um, if there was, it was maybe because I was locked in a skill animation and, you know, he killed me. Uh, that's probably, like, the only thing that mainly happened. And then whenever he jumps back to his original position... He'll do a little roar, so that's why you see me move back in the arena. And um, at one point, I believe I also would um, I, I would block with my j just the normal block button. But we take him out really quick in this, and then I also just end up uh, killing him like maybe two, three more times in multiplayer uh, to try to get the final attack bonus and just you know just to kill it a little bit more for some extra XP for my partners. But that was the first uh, area boss that we took out for this now. Fairly quick. Um, around this time, I'm probably like, like in the beginning of the video when you saw I was at like 12 or 15 hours. Um, I was probably like maybe, you know, um, 11 hours at this point. So not bad for um, getting to the first area boss. Like I said, most of this time was spent to either... Uh, just sitting around AFK, or it was just me uh, killing things. Um, I, I go around and I kill a lot of things. So, that's first area boss down. After all that, this is where I end up doing my first uh, sacrament dungeon. Uh, this is where the um, gear turning point uh, first occurred for me. Because here I can either get a one-handed sword or a scimitar, so I went, I did this like a few, a couple runs, uh, so I can get you know two of those one-handed swords. Luckily, first run I got it, but after that I had to do like maybe three more runs to get it again. But um, I also got a necklace from here, a bangle. Um, I get the little sacrament uh, fusion thing. And then I think I get boots here too, which are extremely good. I think they have, they give me a lot of SP. And later on, I end up putting that on my AIs whenever I get them to enough affinity to be able to give them uh, gear. But overall, I'm just going to speed this clip up as you can see. And um, after that, I'll just show the final rewards from whenever I did them like three other times. But overall, this, I only did this sacrament. I haven't touched any other ones um, after. So at some point, I'll end up doing those other ones uh, as well just to get some other stuff from them. But this was the only one I mainly did. Uh, I spent most of my time here before I even went and really did anything in the second um, story area. 
So this is where I mainly got uh, better gear. So I could do, you know, a lot more damage compared to what I was using before, which was like the standard gear you just find in chests around the story area. Um, the sacraments are actually pretty cheesy uh, nowadays for people starting early, especially if you know what to go for. Because these uh, really change how you play in the beginning and how much you can do in the beginning. So with that being said, I'm just going to let this, the rest of this roll out just so you can see like the whole run whenever I did it. And then I'll just show the uh, other rewards that I ended up getting from the uh, other runs after that. Also, I just want to let you know if you ever end up seeing me open my inventory and you see that I have a uh, armor on that has like a, v a very shiny and green background. That is just from the armor shop. That is the um, ordinal scale outfit for Asuna. That's what I'm using because its stats are really high and the effects on it are really nice. So that's where I got that from. Yo. Oh, I didn't mean to use for the shot, no. Fairly close. I thought I had a rebuff in the pit. I'll cover you. We pop out to the water. Cool, that's a good one, man. No, I'm stuck in the corner again. That's a lot of SP on those. Ooh, scimitar. Now this here is one of the episode enemies in the first area. I mainly did this one just so I can get the rapier from it, so I can put that on Premiere whenever I get her to uh, a higher level affinity. Uh, so this can help her out. Uh, the only thing I kind of didn't like about it was the vitality. Uh, gives you negative um, so that kind of sucks but overall this will be a better rapier for her until probably extremely later so we have that at least for now for her Now here is where I fight another episode enemy, right here, this little uh, knight. And by far this was so annoying to deal with. The guy moves insanely fast, he can counter, which it, it happens rarely, um, but he just moves so often and you can see he's targeting Straya and like he's mo she's moving everywhere and then he's moving to go to her. So. Uh, very annoying fight, but I did this to get the one-handed sword as the reward, and I did this twice Just so I can have that so that'll be my Better one-handed sword for probably a while right now
Here I do another episode enemy and this one ends up giving a scimitar. Um, it kind of sucked that the boss ended up running over here in this direction. Uh, there's trees and you can kind of see it kind of blocks my camera. But um, overall this one was easy as well, not hard. So I do have this scimitar as well whenever I do uh, use scimitar just to mainly get more skill points. Uh, later on we'll end up getting better for sure though, but that's just another episode enemy that we ended up fighting. Um, again, before I even tackle on the second area mainly. So I'm doing all this before even the second area continuing story. Now here we have the second area boss. Um, I also forgot to mention, um, I can't remember exactly when it happened, it was probably during my episode enemies that I was fighting, but um, we did end up unlocking dual wield. I don't remember if I ended up uh, using it for this part, but we did end up getting that. Um, I'm probably swapping right now. Yeah, you can see I got two of those and I'm swapping to it, so. We have that, and also that jump attack 200% bonus, pretty nice in my opinion, um, especially for trash mobs. Um, it's very fun to just run up to them, jump, and then just do one normal attack or two, and then they're just dead. But overall, second boss, easy peasy. Um, I did not fight him in multiplayer again, I don't think, but... Um, and out of the area bosses in Hollow Realization, this one was actually my favorite. I remember whenever I first played the game and I saw this guy, and it was just so cool. The hands uh, that he has, how you can attack them and everything. Very cool boss fight. But that is the second area down, and I believe that is it uh, for the clips that I recorded at this point. Um, so that's two areas we ended up tackling on, episode enemies that are like level 100s and stuff. It's funny because in the beginning of the game, you know, you were um, significantly lower than them. I think the level cap back then was like 50, 60, maybe 70, somewhere around there. So this is this also just shows you that uh, when you're undergeared and even whenever you are literally level one, because uh, level one you're not doing your actual damage, uh, you're doing you're doing significantly lower damage uh, compared to being leveled up. But this just shows you that, you know, you can still do it. Um, this is overall a fun challenge. Maybe, you know, some people seeing this will try it out one day. But overall, I'm really having fun with this. It's, you know, um, bringing back old memories of when I first played the game. And with the knowledge that I know now of the game, it's just so much easier. But, um... Yeah, so this is going to be it for this first part. Um, don't know when I'll get the second part. I'll just have to get enough clips recorded for it. But I'll see y'all then. Peace.